Let us see about single phase half wear rectifier for different types of loads. So single phase uncontrolled rectifier that is diode rectifier in that we have seen about half wear rectifier already. So half wear rectifier with R load and L load has been discussed in the previous video. The link is given in the description. In this lecture, we will see about RL load, RL load with freewheeling diode and RE load. So let us see half a rectifier with RL load. So R and L is here. The property of the inductance is to limit the rate of change of current. It means that the current through the inductor cannot follow the or cannot increase in proportion to the voltage. So it increases gradually. So in this case, it is a diode rectifier. So when the supply voltage is positive, that is during this period, diode will be forward biased and it starts to conduct. So I not flows through this RL load. So now we will see the output, this I not current waveform. So it, uh, the current increases gradually, then it becomes zero at one point, which is denoted by beta. In case of a pure resistive load, we can see that I naught becomes zero at pi. But if you include a inductance here, the current becomes zero at some other value beta. This beta value actually depends upon how much L is connected. So if L is more, beta may become zero at some other value here. So this is the output current waveform. The point to be noted here is, let me take a pen. So this period, pi to this beta point, actually this lies in the negative half cycle of the supply voltage. It means that this during negative half cycle also, output current flows through this diode because inductor current cannot become zero immediately it needs a path to dissipate the stored energy so the current starts to flow the current continues to flow in the same direction till it becomes zero it means that the diode is still in conduction during the negative half period also. So during this period also, diode is in conduction. Okay. So till this beta diode will be in conduction or till the energy stored in inductance becomes zero, diode will be in conduction. So this is the output current. Next we will see what is the output voltage. So output voltage, diode is in conduction till beta. So output voltage is equal to supply voltage till beta. So you see this waveform. So this is similar to the supply voltage waveform till beta. Same waveform till beta. After that becomes zero. So output voltage is equal to supply voltage when diode is in conduction. Next we will draw the diode voltage. So whenever a diode is conducting voltage across it is zero. So diode is conducting till beta. So till that waveform is zero. After that diode has stopped conduction. So output voltage is also not there zero. So this voltage appears across this terminal. So VD is equal to VS. So what is VS? This is the waveform. So that waveform appears across the diode. So in case of an inductive, that is RL load, current will not become zero at pi. Instead, it comes to zero at beta. So till beta, Supply voltage is equal to output voltage. So what you have to remember here is whenever there is an inductance in the load side, 
current cannot inductive current cannot become zero immediately you knew you have to provide a path for the inductor current to flow till it becomes zero so that you should remember so now we have got an output voltage waveform with this we cannot uh, find what is the average value so you have to uh, find um, the average value of this output voltage waveform so how to find the average output voltage so this is the output voltage waveform and formula is given by 1 by t integral of 0 t f of t is here v naught so uh, substitute v naught equal to vm sin omega t integrated and the limits is output voltage is available from 0 to beta so 0 to beta so sin omega t integrated it is minus cos omega t so you will get vm by 2 pi 1 minus suppose this is the average voltage now if beta value increases what happens if beta value increases beta increases to this point suppose beta increases to this point average voltage will become like this so if average voltage in the negative portion increases average value decreases it means that as beta increases v average will decrease or if there is more inductance average voltage will decrease so you will find the root mean square value so what is root mean square so this is root square root finding the average value and then squaring the function so f of t is nothing but v naught v naught is vm sin omega t so square it you cannot integrate a square a function so instead of sin square omega t you put 1 minus cos 2 omega t by 2 then integrate it you will get this so this is the rms value of output voltage in all the cases you have this term beta but we till now we haven't uh, found what is beta so let us do that calculation so now let us find beta what is um, beta so this is the circuit we have taken so apply Kitchev's law and find the equation so when diode is on v naught is equal to vs so what is v naught ir plus l into d by dt so this is v naught that is equal to vs vm sin omega t so this is a differential equation you might have studied in mathematics so you can solve this equation and find the particular integral as well as complementary function so that um, you will get the this as a solution i know that this is equal to this one now you have one constant a here so you have to find what is this a so for that apply the boundary conditions so what is the boundary condition at omega t equal to 0 that is at initial stage i naught is 0 substitute this one to find what is a so you have got what is a so substitute a value here and you will get the expression for i naught still we have not found what is beta so again you apply one more boundary condition at omega t equal to beta also i naught equal to 0 so now in this equation let us uh, substitute omega t equal to beta so i naught equal to 0 and instead of omega t put beta so you will get this expression so this is not easy to solve since it involves uh, trigonometry functions you can solve using a computer you solve that and find what is the beta actually you can stop with this derivation because um, practically it is difficult to do it manually so you can stop with this equation but you can find the value of beta from this one using computer 
So, if you know the value of beta, you can substitute in those uh, average value and RMS value and you can find the numerical values for B average and B RMS. So, as L increases, beta will increase. So, V average will decrease. So, next is half a rectifier uh, with RL load which includes a freewheeling diode. We have seen in uh, case of RL load, the output voltage goes negative. So, if output voltage goes negative, average voltage is getting decreased. But we don't want a rectifier to have a lower average output voltage. So, we have to avoid the output voltage from becoming negative. So, this can be done by adding a freewheeling diode. So, how it helps to improve the performance of the half air rectifier, we can see now. So, now during positive half cycle, what happens? So, this is, let me take a pen. So, this is um, positive and this is negative during positive half cycle. So, this diode conducts and current flows through the load, RL load like this. So, you will get the output voltage as positive one. And at the same time, so since it is positive negative during the positive half cycle, this diode will be reverse biased. So, it will not conduct only this diode conducts. So, this is the circuit during past half cycle. During negative half cycle, what happens? Here it is negative and here it is positive. So, this diode will conduct whereas this diode will get turned off. So, now this load current, we are providing an alternate path for the load current. So, initially current is flowing in this direction. Now, it flows through this freewheeling diode. So, what happens? You are, uh, you are providing an alternate path for this current to flow. So, this current will flow till all the energy stored in this inductance is delivered to the load. So, current I0 becomes 0 only at beta where energy stored in L is equal to energy dissipated in R. So, during positive half cycle, uh, current, this diode conducts and current flows here. So, now let us draw the waveform. So, if you see V naught, output voltage is equal to supply voltage. So, draw the supply voltage waveform for 0 to pi. Now, you see the current waveform, it is same as a RL load uh, circuit. So, uh, output current increases and then gradually decreases uh, till uh, beta. Now, during negative half cycle, current is flowing here. So, this diode is not conducting. Oh, so, what will be the output voltage? It is actually, you are shorting this one because it is a diode only. So, current flows through this. So, output voltage is 0. Current will flow, but output voltage will be 0. Okay, output voltage um, is 0 and current becomes 0 at beta as usual. So, current waveform will not change only output voltage will change because you will not get a negative portion here. Thereby, you are getting a higher average voltage. And if you see the uh, voltage across this diode D waveform, same thing, diode is not conducting during this period. So, it will be equal to the supply voltage waveform. So, you will get minus Vm. And when diode is conducting, it is 0. That is, you know already. So, let us find the average value of output voltage. This is similar to half a rectifier only. So, you, it is 
Vm by pi. And if you find the RMS value of output voltage, you will get Vm by 2. This uh, is similar to half a rectifier output because you are getting output voltage only in one half cycle. Now we will find the difference between half a rectifier RL load and RL load with freewheeling diode. So V average is equal to Vm by 2 pi into 1 minus cos beta in case of RL load. Whereas when you have a freewheeling diode, V average will be Vm by pi. Here output voltage becomes negative because of that average voltage will decrease. Here there is no negative portion. And uh, here efficiency is low. You will get a higher efficiency here because um, the energy stored in L is dissipated in R. So your efficiency is improved in case of uh, freewheeling load. And uh, in case of RL load, load performance is poor. Whereas in case of um, freewheeling diode, performance will be improved because you will get a smoother waveform. And uh, moreover, the energy stored in L is utilized. So you will get a better performance. Now we will see half a rectifier with RE load. R is resistor and E represents a uh, EMF or um, battery so this is a re load so if you see the re load this is the supply voltage and here the circuit is somewhat different because you have a source voltage here and you have a dc voltage here so you have to represent that e also here because the diode will be forward biased when anode is more positive with respect to cathode or it will be conducting only when this Vs, this point is more positive compared to this one. So now if you have two waveforms, uh, AC waveform and a DC waveform. So now we will find at what instant this diode will conduct. Okay. So this is Vs, supply voltage Vs. So it is increasing continuously. And this is E. So E is a fixed value. So if you see at this instant, AC, AC voltage is 0. Whereas E, assume that E is some 100 volts. So it is surely uh, greater than this supply voltage. So diode will not conduct till this point. So only at this instant, this anode portion is more positive with respect to cathode. So diode will conduct. So diode conduction will be from this point to this point. So that is, so during this period only current will flow. So this is represented, this junction or crossover is represented by angle theta 1. So similarly, you will get this period as theta 1 or you can represent this point as pi minus theta 1. So this is pi 180 degree minus theta 1 will give you this instant. So, how to find this theta 1? So, Vm, Vm sin theta 1 equal to E. So, only at this instant diode will conduct from this find what is theta 1. So, the conduction angle is given by pi minus 2 theta 1. So, this is theta 1 and this is pi minus theta 1. So, this period the center portion for which um, the diode conducts is given by pi minus 2 theta 1. Now we have to find what is the value across the diode. So we know Vm sin omega t is equal to 
that is source voltage is equal to output voltage e plus i into r this is the output voltage so from this you can find what is i naught what is vd vd is vs minus v naught so you have this one so substitute the values for uh, uh, different boundary conditions you can find what is vd so at omega t equal to 0 what is vd omega t equal to 0 v this apply in this formula vs is 0 minus e plus i naught is also 0 so substitute this you will get next boundary condition apply at pi so at pi also vs is 0 then i naught is also 0 so you will get this value at omega equal to 3 pi by 2 vd is equal to 3 pi by 2 means this value so at this point vs is equal to minus vm so substitute minus vm minus e what is i naught i naught is 0 so leave this one so you will get minus vm plus e minus of vm plus e so that is what represented here So now the points to remember here are with RL load, load current can be continuous or discontinuous depending upon the value of L. That is the beta value can be a small or um, a large one depending upon the value of L. Then because of revealing diode, output voltage will not become negative. So you can prevent your um, average output voltage becoming a very low value. The efficiency of the system is improved with freewheeling layout because um, the energy stored in inductance is uh, dissipated in the load resistance and thereby you will get a, a better load performance. So these are some of the references and if you like the video do subscribe to our read electric vehicle channel. Thank you.